Next up, as summer continues, producers are dealing with hot and dry conditions, and they may also encounter blue-green algae in ponds and dugouts. It's an issue that could lead to undesirable health impacts on your cattle. Market Journal's Bill Dodd spoke with the Nebraska Extension educator Amy Timmerman to discuss some ways to manage the problem. Cyanobacteria blooms, or blue-green algae as they're typically known, have a penchant for coming on with consistent hot and dry weather. While not all blue-green algae is toxic, it's important to keep in mind it could still have a disastrous impact on the water your livestock depends on. When it comes to mitigating these type of algae blooms, the more you understand how they develop could be beneficial in understanding how to limit them. So for blue-green algae blooms, they're actually influenced by how high nitrogen and phosphorus loads. So any way that we can prevent nitrogen and phosphorus from flowing into that pond or dugout is really the big key. So we're going to be looking at buffer strips around the pond if need be. Um, any of our other, you know, management practices to conserve nitrogen and phosphorus with proper tillage, uh, watering, different components like that will really be one of the big components. And the other big one for cattle is making sure cattle aren't standing in those ponds and dugouts and defecating into that water because that's a huge nitrate load that's going directly into that water. If you think you may be dealing with the toxic effects of a blue-green algae bloom, there are several signs you should try to stay aware of before it's too late. So if you suspect you're having a problem, the big thing is you need to go out and you need to walk your ponds and dugouts and take a look. The first telltale sign that you have a problem is looking for dead wildlife. So the wildlife are just as susceptible to the toxin as the cattle. So if you're seeing dead turtles, snakes, rabbits, raccoons, that is an indication that we probably have a problem going on. So for our cattle that have been exposed to the toxin in blue-green algae, what you're going to be looking for is we can see those symptoms developing within two hours, two to four hours after consumption. And there are basic neurological stumbling um, unsteadiness affecting our liver. We're going to see pale mucous membranes in that mouth. Um, and then eventually we're just going to see the animal convulsing and then just dying from all the impact of this toxin. So the sad part is there isn't a magical cure that, that we can give these cattle once they've consumed it. If you believe they've been in contact with it, you can try to have them ingest some charcoal um, to help offset the impacts of the toxin, but it isn't a for sure that it's going to save that animal. When it comes to livestock that may have been exposed to these algae blooms, it's important to keep in mind some varieties of livestock may have more severe reactions than others. So it's not specific to cattle breed. Um, all animals are all 100% susceptible to it. However, if we have a low dosage exposure for our light colored skinned animals, so I'm gonna pick on Charlene's that are white and skinned, they can actually have a photosensitivity reaction to it. So what they end up doing is because of their light colored skin, they're more sensitive to the sun. So they get a really bad sunburn. And just like you and I, when we're sunburned, the skin's gonna blister and then it's gonna peel. And so these animals are very sensitive to the sun for several days. And the best course of treatment for those animals is actually to put them in the barn during the daytime hours to protect them from the sun because it isn't like you can put sunscreen on them or put a shirt on them, put them in the barn and let them out at night. It may recover within a week. It may take a month for them to actually recover from that photosensitivity, but it's only our light skin cattle. So anything that's white, uh, white hide will uh, experience that type of reaction. If you're wanting to test your water source for blue-green algae, there are several factors you should consider when collecting and submitting a sample. The other trick is I'm going to really encourage those ranchers to walk to the leeward side of that pond or dugout, which is downwind. Since the bacteria is only on the surface, it will congregate in concentrations down there. So go to that leeward side, look for that film or scum on the water surface. That film or scum can actually be blue or green, but it can also be yellow or red in coloration when it's actively growing. But you take a look there. And if we see that and you're really concerned, what you need to do is you're gonna collect a water sample, just like you do for groundwater. Um, you're gonna dip it in, you're gonna collect that water sample in a clear, clean jar. 
um, within those top six inches. But when you do that, I really encourage people to wear a glove, um, some type of rubber glove, because the toxin is dangerous to us too, and it's for your safety. So you need at least 100 millimeter milliliter. So I usually recommend you need at least two or 300 milliliters to be on the safe side. Put a cap on it and then make sure you get that sample in the refrigerator. If we keep it at room temperature or on the dash of your pickup, the bacteria is going to continue to grow. And it's going to give you a false positive uh, per se. So keep it refrigerated, send it in a refrigerated container. I recommend it to ship it but Monday through Wednesday to assure that the lab gets it in time and it doesn't sit in the UPS truck or FedEx over the weekend uh, with no air conditioning. And currently the only lab we have in the state that will test for blue-green algae is Midwest Laboratories in Omaha. While there are several factors at play that can accelerate the growth of a blue-green algae bloom, when it comes to dealing with the hot dry weather conditions that we have been, it's imperative to stay vigilant of the water sources your livestock depend on. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dodd.